Trading options and choosing your strike price is all about finding a balance between risk, reward, and probabilities. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining how I choose my strike prices and how I was able to make over 250% profits overnight by choosing the right options. But first, we need to talk about moneyness or in the money versus out of the money. When an option is in the money, the person that bought that option can exercise the option to buy or sell 100 shares of the stock for a better price. So for a call option, whenever somebody buys that call, they're agreeing to buy 100 shares of the stock at that strike price that they chose. So ideally, they would want the stock to be above that strike price. That way they're getting a discount for buying it at the lower strike price. That way they can exercise it to buy the 100 shares at their strike price and then sell those same shares at the higher market value for the stock. And the opposite goes for put options since whenever somebody buys a put, they're agreeing to sell 100 shares of their stock at the strike price that they choose. So ideally, they would want to sell the stock for a higher price than what the current market value is. This way, they could buy the shares for cheaper at the lower market price and then sell them at the higher markup at their strike price. So those are in the money options. And an option is out of the money when it doesn't make sense for the option buyer to want to exercise that option. So for a call option, this would be a strike price that's above the current market value because you wouldn't want to pay more for the shares than what they're currently trading at. And for a put option, this will be a strike price that's below the current market value of the stock because you wouldn't want it because you wouldn't want to sell the shares for a lower price than what it's currently trading at. And when an option expires out of money, it expires completely worthless since there's no intrinsic value for that option. Whereas with an in the money option, it does have intrinsic value, which will be the difference between the strike price that's chosen and the current market value of the stock. So that's in the money, out of the money. So how do we choose our strike prices? Well, whenever you're buying an option, you want to make sure that option expires in the money because, again, if that option expires out of the money, it expires completely worthless. So if you buy an out of the money option and it expires out of the money, then whatever you put into that trade is going to go to zero. And you can increase the odds of your option expiring in the money by going deeper in the money and choosing an option with a higher delta value. Delta is how much your option moves for every $1 change in the stock price, and it also acts as an estimate of your option expiring in the money. So if you have a 70 delta, there's around a 70% chance of your option expiring in the money, or a 30% chance of the option expiring worthless and out of the money. So whenever you're buying options, you want to have a higher delta value if you don't want the option to expire worthless. But to me, it really depends on my confidence for the trade. If I'm more confident in a trade, I'm more willing to go with a lower delta value. So I could go out of the money if I'm more confident on a trade like I was with this SPY put debit spread. I ended up opening this 407, 406 put debit spread for SPY on Friday whenever SPY was trading for around $422. And if I remember correctly, these options only had a negative 0.6 delta. So in terms of probabilities, I had no business in opening this trade. But I was looking at the chart for SPY on the daily and yearly chart, and I noticed a trend over the past seven months, SPY would make a huge move in weeks three and four every single month. And I took the average of these moves, and it was around 7.5%. So based on the high at $431.50, this could potentially send SPY below $400. But that was the average move. So I decided against the $400 strike price and actually went with the 407 and 406 strike prices. And I ended up paying $7 each to open 30 debit spread. So I didn't put a lot of money into this trade. I only spent $210 in order to open it. Because again, there's a 94% chance that this option is going to go against me. So this is about balancing the risk or the $210 and the potential reward, if I'm right, will be $2,800 if SPY is below my 406 strike price on my expiration date. But this was a high confidence trade. If I'm not so certain on a trade going my way, 
then I'm gonna choose an option with a lower strike price and a higher delta value. So for example, if I wanna buy a leaps call for SPY, I'm not so certain on the market going up over the next year because of all the headwinds that we're facing. So I would probably go with a higher delta value. Again, we're gonna do a leaps option. So we're gonna set our expiration date for over a year out. And because I have less confidence, I'm gonna go with a higher delta and a further in the money option. And whenever I'm choosing a leaps option, right now I've been sticking with an 80 to a 90 delta. So this would land us between the $345 strike price with an 81 delta trading for $9,400 or the $295 strike price with a 91 delta trading for $13,450. And the way that I'm gonna choose between these is how much money I have to spend in order to open this trade. Right now, I'm loaded up on cash, so I'd probably go with the $295 call. And because I'm spending that extra $4,000, I'm increasing the odds of this option expiring in the money by around 10%. But if for some reason, SPY ends up dropping like hell to under $295, then I can still lose $13,450 if this option expires out of the money where SPY is below 295 on my expiration date of September 15th, 2023. And that's how I buy options. Again, when I'm less certain, I'm gonna choose a higher delta value. When I'm more certain, I'm gonna choose a lower delta value. But that's whenever you're buying options. Whenever you're selling options, you actually want the opposite. You want the option to expire out of the money that way it expires completely worthless and you receive the full credit that you got whenever you open the trade. So if you want to have a high chance of the option expiring out of the money and collecting that full credit, then you're gonna wanna go with a lower delta value. And the odds of the option expiring out of the money is just going to be one minus the delta value. And that's gonna give you a percent chance of your option working in your favor. But if I'm more confident in a trade going my way, then I'm willing to go with a higher delta value whenever I'm selling options. But I generally don't go with in the money options. And the reason for this is because when an option is in the money, the deeper that option goes in the money, the less extrinsic value the option is going to have, which is going to make your break even price less attractive. Whereas if you have an out of the money option, this has the highest amount of extrinsic value due to the bell curve, where options that are far out of the money have the least extrinsic value, and options that are far in the money also have the least extrinsic value, but options that are at the money or closest to the current stock price are gonna have the highest amount of extrinsic value. So these options are going to decay the fastest whenever it comes to time decay. So again, whenever I'm more confident in a trade, then I'm gonna go with an at the money strike price, but if I'm less confident in a trade going my way, then I'm gonna go with a lower delta value further out of the money option. So for example, if I want to buy 100 shares of SPY by selling a put option right now, I'm less confident in SPY going up this week, so I'm gonna choose a lower delta value whenever I sell this put option. I'm gonna set my expiration date and then I'm going to choose a delta value between 20 and 30 because of my lower confidence. So there's about a 20% chance or a 30% chance of the option expiring in the money to me getting assigned to have to buy 100 shares of the stock. And if we find a 30 delta value, that's going to be this 408 put with a 29.4 delta. And this option is paying $196 in credit. But if I'm looking for a 20 delta value, that would be the 405 put, which has a 20.77. So there's roughly a 20% chance of this option expiring in the money, which means that there's an 80% chance of the option expiring out of the money to where I don't have to buy 100 shares of SPY at 405, and I get to keep that $125 in credit. But I'm more confident in SPY coming down this week. So if I had 100 shares of SPY to sell, I could sell a call option, and since I'm more confident in this trade going my way, I'm gonna go with an at the money strike price. Right now, SPY is trading for $414.12, so I'd sell the $414 call, 
and right now this is paying $389 in credit. So that at the money strike price is gonna pay the most amount of credit in comparison to out of the money strike prices. And again, if we go in the money, we're gonna have diminishing returns based on the break-even prices. The break-even for this 410 call is $415.65, or 410 plus the 565 in credit, whereas the break-even for this 414 call is 414 plus the 389 in credit for a break-even of almost $418. And that's how I choose my strike price whenever I'm trading options. It's all about finding a balance between risk, reward, and probabilities. So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for making all the way to the end of this video. And thank you to all my patrons for the support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.